So please welcome up Chris. But doesn't kill you makes you Hi guys, well I'm gonna share with you um, a shocking story that happened to me two years ago and the three lessons I want you to take away. But before I tell you that, I'll just give you a little bit of history because some of you might go, oh yeah, I've seen some of the stuff that you've done. Well, 20 years ago, I've got made redundant suddenly. And my dream was out of work was I'd love to set up my own business. So I set up a personal growth business by mail order, selling importing products from the States, CD sets, tape sets then, and selling them to people in the UK. Now, I don't know if you, this is the business, it's called Live Tools. Any of you know the Sedona method? Great. Yeah. And it's, if you've heard it, it's like if you're feeling angry, you say, could I let the anger go? Would I let the anger go? And when would I do that? Well, it was me that found Haley in the States and introduced the Sedona method into the UK and brought the creator of this into the UK. And we sold thousands of these sets. So that's one thing I did in the UK. Anybody know photo reading? Yes. There you go, Marilyn and Harry. <laughs> Photo reading is a way of reading at 25,000 words a minute and Paul Sheely, who created this, has spoken here, I think twice maybe, that he spoke at the Yes Group. Well, I brought um, photo reading into the UK. We saw thousands of sets, but we promoted them around the UK. And the third thing I was going to show you, just so you get, oh yeah, I've heard of it, seen the advertising, is Mind Lab. I don't know if you've ever seen these. You put these goggles on and they use pulse lights to get you into a very relaxed state. <coughs> Any of you seen this kind of stuff? No. Oh, only a couple. Well, one of the buyers of this was this masseuse, and she was the masseuse for Tony Robbins many years <laughs> ago. So when she went into massaging over an unlimited power weekend, she actually put these goggles on him, and he went into this profound relaxed state while she's massaging him. And he immediately said, where can I get these from? So he ordered three of them, there and then we sent them down to the conference and then he ordered some more a few months later. So I was very proud, very excited because I've followed Tony for years. So anyway, a few years ago, five years ago, my family and I, we moved out to Abu Dhabi. And I spent three years in Abu Dhabi having the most wonderful time. And I, as Harry said, I organized a TEDx event there and I was doing some coaching and things. And this is me with a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Two years ago, I decided I was going to move back to the UK. And three nights before I came back, so I was flying back to the UK, leaving Abu Dhabi, coming back to the UK. And three nights before, I sat up in bed and I felt a bit uncomfortable. Something wasn't right. And I reached down and I felt my left testicle. And it was a bit firmer than usual. <laughs> well, I wasn't worried because we had private medical care in Abu Dhabi. And I'd gone to the doctor and said, can they have every kind of test? Because Steve Jobs had died with pancreatic cancer. So I thought, well, while I've got this private medical care, I'll have every test to make sure I'm really healthy. And it came back, I was completely healthy. So here was me with this slight firmness. Why well, I wasn't really <laughs> So three days later, I flew back into the UK and went straight to my doctor and he said probably nothing but he sent me for an ultrasound so i went to the ultrasound this big german guy with some of this gel and he squeezed it all over my leather pieces <laughs> all this gel this big probe and then he looked me in the eyes and said malignant tumor <laughs> well it's like i don't know if you think for a minute you think, now which is malignant one is that the one that doesn't mean anything, he's not, not doing anything, or is it something that needs to be done with? So they spoke to me very slowly, said, follow me this way. <laughs> and they speak to me very slowly, said, look, we need to get you on the operating theatre in three days. We cancel everything else, you get in, it's priority. So I was like stunned, never been in an operating theatre before. So three days later, I was sitting there, and the, the surgeon put his big arrow on my left leg. And it's like, who's going to do this operation? Like, it's like Mr. Magoo character. <laughs> so I was even more scared. Because you want to make sure they 
they cut out the left one, which is the right one to cut out, of course. So anyway, we had this operation, and out it come. And of course, has the cancer spread? You know, is it just isolated that one area? So then I've got my favourite outfit from my wardrobe, and, uh, here, and my shoes, and went into this CT scan. Now this is a radio radiation, isn't it? So you push you into this, and then they find out if it's spread to the lymph nodes, because if it's spread up from the testicle, then it's, you're going to have to have chemotherapy. Well, thank God, you know, I was completely clear of this, so you know, I didn't need to have chemotherapy, which was great. Now, the thing is, there are three lessons I want to share with you from this, because it changed my perspective on life, completely. You know, I see I saw things very differently, and my first one lesson I want to share with you is live each day as if it was your last. The reality is that for the 90% of you, you're going to live until your 90s. Maybe even 100, because the advances in health are astonishing just over the last few years. And I would, I would almost bet that some of you are going to live way into your 100. But one day, it will be your last day. And we don't know when that's going to be. And I've had friends who've died suddenly. But wouldn't it be wonderful if you live your life as if it was your last? Because one day it will be. And it means that when you're interacting with people, that you treat them as though it could be the last time you see them. Now, this isn't about being morbid or anything. This is about just a way of looking so you're more engaged with people. It brings you into the present moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the other thing is I want to say, which is the second point is don't delay, act today. It's very easy to put off stuff to tomorrow. I mean, Laura talked about this earlier. It's like, I'm not quite ready yet. You know? But there's only today. There's only today. And it's very easy to put things off, but wouldn't it be great to act today? Now look, if I acted immediately, immediately and gone to the doctors, the cancer would have spread. It appeared from nothing and grew fast in about two to three weeks and filled the majority of my left testicle. That's it. So you need to move quickly in life because you never know what's around the corner. Now, if I had done absolutely nothing, then I would, it would have spread through my body and I'd be dead within two years. Now, up to several years ago, then, you know, you know until they realised what it was, they could cut the thing out, you know, people would be dying. So this was two years ago, so I, if it wasn't for me acting, then I'd be dead and I wouldn't be here in front of you now. So you need to act today. Now, one of the things is the benefits of me acting today is I have two young children. Now, I've got to watch because I just get very emotional. These are my boys. Yeah. They're young boys. Now, they would be without a father if I didn't act. Now, there are many men who leave it and, and delay. I mean, Lance Armstrong left it late, you know, and that's why he had to have the chemotherapy, because he didn't go to the doctor quickly. So you've got to act today. Now, I always get a great reminder for me, because what is fantastic is I've got this silicon testicle. It's, it's like this. It's clear plastic, sea silicon. It's got salt water inside. So when I wake up in the morning in a fetal position, my body says, there's something not quite right. Because salt water and full is firmer than a fleshy white one. <laughs> so you need, so I've got this reminder. So you need reminders to say, live each day as if you're the last. This is right in the middle of my mirror to show you. You need reminders. Now I have another reminder, which is, you know, if I go to the supermarket, you know, they have these automated tills where you put things through it. Occasionally this woman says, unexpected item in bagging area. <laughs> 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 well, thank you. It's like, well, thanks for saying thank you. Yeah, because it reminds me to live each day. Now, you need a reminder. You know, what's going to be your reminder? Because it's very easy to forget me that I ever even was on this stage. You'll forget Laura and Peter and all the rest. You don't forget. Because we get on with our life, we need a no. daily reminder, which is why it's useful to have a coach. Why it's useful to have an accountability partner. You know what an accountability partner is? Yeah. You have a mate, they say, you call me on your, you make sure I do this by Friday, and I'll make sure you do your stuff by Friday. And then of course you think, oh my God, I better do that by Friday. So you need something like that, you know. 
Now where am I? And the third point is have a ball. <laughs> and put the ten <laughs> You know, we've got to treat life as fun. Now, I'm, I'm trying to be serious about it you know, because, you know, the reality is, I said, you're going to live into your 90s and so on. But I want you to realise you need to have fun in the doing of the day-to-day -day actions. So have fun doing those things. And that's what life's about, because there's always a way to turn an item, a job, into something that's fun. And that with a smile on your face, because with a smile on your face, you actually get things moving. So what is what I propose is, I've got, to, I've got five minutes left for you. These are my three tips. Live each day as if it was your last. Don't delay act today. And thirdly, have a ball. Because when you find the fun in everything you do, you smile and you get things moving. So what I want you to do now, and there's one other thing I'd say, is take a risk as a bonus one. Make those risks. Do something that's scary. Not too, too scary, but do something that's slightly scary. And that way, it's amazing what progress you can make. So what I'd like you to do in our last few minutes, I'd like you to stood up. <laughs> and with most of the first parties, I'm going to ask you just to keep your eyes open. So I'd like you to take the back of your head and just move it forward to do stretch the back of your neck. Because quite often, this muscle gets quite tight. Yeah? And feel the stretch. And look up again. And now I need to open your mouth wide and stretch the your mouth muscles. Great. And move your jaw. Now focus on your breathing. So breathe in over five seconds. And out over five seconds. Breathe in for five. And out for five. Now when I do that, I become more aware of what's going on and time slows down. Do you get that sense? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So notice the difference you feel from that simple exercise that you could do every day. Now I'd like you to close your eyes now. And nothing's gonna happen. I'm just gonna guide you through something. I want you to imagine going home tonight and sitting down with a piece of paper and writing down one thing that you can do tomorrow that's the most important job that you can do first thing. So you're writing this tonight very kindly and gently. Make it something you can do in five to 30 minutes that's not a crisis stretch thing, but just a gentle stretch for you. Something maybe you've been putting off. So that's the task to write this job down. I'm gonna start this eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, it's the first thing before you go to Facebook or email to start the day because it could be your last day tomorrow, but with just as a way of looking. And then I want you to future pace into tomorrow and imagine yourself doing it with a smile on your face like you're doing now, a gentle smile on your face. So you can see yourself doing that and at the end of that time, that five to 30 minutes, you celebrate your magnificence for doing that thing so differently and starting your day doing the one thing that's most important. Now what I did when I got this cancer is I created 200 videos over the last two years for my children and for my clients because I don't know how long I've got on this planet. But I just did every week or so, I did one little video, five, ten minutes. That's an hour, so another video of my children from if I was to die as well. So you need to do these little tasks. So I want you to imagine you're going to do that. Now this last thing I want you to do is I want you to think of all the people who love you and think you're wonderful. Bring to mind your parents, your friends, your children or your grandparents and think of them and feel their love because you know what they love you for? Not for who you will be or who you were, but for who you are now. So if they can love you for who you are now, what if you could love yourself even more than you do right now for who you are? I know there's some things you're disappointed in and you think, oh, I should have got this by, I should have done this by now. Let yourself off the hook for now. Reset your life. Tomorrow is the start of your new life. So now I'd like you to open your eyes. 
And I want you to applaud the person who deserves the biggest applause in this room. The miracle that is you. Well done you. Please applaud yourselves for the miracle that is you.